So the first question here, we've got the magnitude of earthquakes on a linear scale, and we've got the energy released on a logarithmic scale. And we can see here this is going up by 100 each step. The first two parts of the question, we just need to simply read off the information from the scale. So for part A, for tsunamis of magnitude 9, which is in it here, and I'll put the lines in just to make it a bit clearer, we can see that's just 10 to the power of 18. Okay, it's just a different way of writing 10 to the 18. You often see it on spreadsheets. For the second part, when it's magnitude of 7, And that comes out halfway between 10 to the power of 14 and 10 to the power of 16. It is a logarithmic scale, but halfway between those is just 10 to the power of 15. Because if we multiply 10 to the power of 14 by 10, we get 10 to the power of 15. Multiply by 10 again, we get 10 to the power of 16. The third part is asking us a bit more. So we need to find out how much times as much energy is released by an earthquake of magnitude 7 was by one of magnitude three. Now we know magnitude seven is 10 to the 15 joules. Magnitude three comes out on the scale here, halfway between 10 to the power of eight and 10 to the power of 10. So that's 10 to the power of nine. To find out how much, many times as much this is, we have to do 10 to the 15 divided by 10 to the 9. Using our index laws, we get 10 to the power of 6. So a million times as much energy is released by an earthquake of magnitude 7. Question 2. This is looking at pH values. We've got the pH again in a linear scale going across the x-axis. And on a logarithmic scale, we've got the concentration of positive hydrogen ions. As we're going down, we're dividing by 100 each time. So multiplying by 100 as we go up. Sometimes with these spreadsheet charts, it can be really hard to read the numbers off it. There's not many lines in there to help guide us. But you might be able to see here, we know we've got pH value of 0 represented here, pH value of 10 represented here. These are equally spaced, so they're going up by 2 each time and spotting that is going to really help us when we're trying to read information from this chart. It also says to draw in the line through the points and we're going to need to do that to read this off accurately. The first part is after the concentration of positive ions in pure water. We're told up in the question that pure water is neutral and has a pH of 7. So that's in here. Again, I'll draw the lines in to help us read it off accurately. And that's halfway between 10 to the minus 6 and 10 to the minus 8. So that's 10 to the power of minus 7 positive hydrogen ions. Reading the other way, so we've got a concentration of 10 to the minus 9, which is going to be in here. And that's going to be a pH of 9. Working out that scale earlier really helped us with that. Acid rain has a pH value of 2. We can see that here. So that's 10 to the minus 2. Rain water has a pH value of 6, which is this point here, 10 to the minus 6. So asking us how many more times more concentrated is acid rain compared to ordinary rain. So what we need to do for this is we need to do 10 to the power of minus two divided by 10 to the power of minus six. Now using our index laws, this gives us 10 to the power of four or 10,000 times more. Remember when we're dividing numbers with the same base, we do this, take away this. So negative two, take away negative six gives us the power of four. Last part, vinegar has a pH of 2.5, so 3 is going to be in there, 2.5 is going to be around there. 
we want to know the concentration of positive ions. Now this one we have to be a bit more accurate reading it from the scale. So if I draw this across, and it is difficult on a scale like this. Now we can see halfway between 10 to the power of minus 2 and 10 to the power of minus 4 is here. That will be 10 to the power of minus 3. Now we need to try and estimate whereabouts on it this line is. Now it looks a bit less than halfway between 10 to the power of minus 2 and 10 to the power of minus 3. If it was halfway, it'd be 10 to the power of minus 2.5. But I'm going to go with 10 to the power of negative 2.4. And it'd be really useful to convert that into a regular number for our answer. So 10 to the power of negative 2.4. And we get this. Now, we're going to round it. Let's round it just to one significant figure, which will give us 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay, and that's the concentration of positive ions. If we had to write that out as a regular number, it would be 0 0.004. Okay, with those three moves for the decimal place. For question three, we were given two charts. First one for the population of England and Wales, second one for the population of Scotland, and they both go on a linear scale from 1800 up to 1940. They both have a logarithmic scale for population, for the y-axis. For England and Wales, this goes from 10 million, so that's 10 to the power of 7, up to 100 million, which is 10 to the power of 8. And for Scotland, with a smaller population, it goes from 1 million, which is 10 to the power of 6, up to 10 million, which is 10 to the power of 7. Now, the first part of the question is saying someone wants to put a line halfway across. I need to work out what population this represents. Now, on the next part of the question, they've drawn the line in for you there. So remember, this is 10 to the 7 and 10 to the 8. This is 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 7. Now remember with a logarithmic scale, when we read it, we've got to think about these powers we're using. Halfway between 10 to the power of 7 and 10 to the power of 8 is 10 to the power of 7.5. On the calculator, that gives us 31,620,000. Now, with this, we don't need to round it too accurately. It'll be absolutely fine here if we do it to two significant figures. So the halfway line there is 32 million. For the population of Scotland, the halfway line is going to be 10 to the power of 6.5. So that's halfway between 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 7. That gives us 3,200,000 rounded to two significant figures. What was the approximate population of England and Wales in 1840? So we know this is 10 million here. Halfway we know is about 32 million. It's a logarithmic, not a linear scale. So reading it off for 1840, We've got to judge about how far up the scale this line is. So that's halfway, that's a quarter. I'd say that's maybe two tenths up. So that means this point here is going to be 10 to the 7.2. Now, if the answer here will be expected to put that as a regular number. So 10 to the power of 7.2 we have here. So that's 16 million to two significant figures. Now the next part wants us to work out how many more people in England and Wales in 1930 than in 1840. Well, we know the population 1840, so we need to work it out for 1930. So that's this point here. If we read it across the axis, and please excuse me using my daughter's ruler, 
So again, we've got to work out about how far up the scale this is. So it's a bit more than halfway. I'll say that's about six tenths of the way up. So in 1930, we've got a figure of 10 to the power of 7.6. Now, that gives us a figure of 40 million, rounded to two significant figures. And we will round our final answer. But what I can do just to make sure I'm keeping it accurate, to find the difference, I'll use the powers. And that gives us this answer, which is a difference of 24 million to two significant figures. You could round that to a different amount. In core maths exams, you are often penalised if you're too specific in your answer. If it's an example like this, where we're just reading it off a graph and we can't see it that accurately. Especially if you gave an answer something like 0.13 of a person more. The last part caused a few people a problem with this, asking in what year is the population of Scotland approximately three million? Now, if you worked out what this middle line represented, which is about 3,200,000, you can see we're looking for a year just a little bit below this. OK, 1860 is just a little bit below it here. So in that year, the population was approximately 3 million. Last couple of questions. Number four, so here we've got revenue from Facebook. We've got the year on a linear scale and we've got the revenue on a logarithmic scale. And this time it's going up by a power of 10 each time. So in what year was the revenue first over a billion dollars? This also caused a lot of problems. A billion dollars is a thousand million or 10 to the power of nine. Once you've got that, it's not a problem. You can see this is the line representing a billion dollars. The first time it surpassed it was in 2010. We then need to estimate the revenue in 2011. If I try and fairly carefully draw that in. Now we can see it's a bit over halfway between 10 to the power of 9 and 10 to the power of 10. If it was halfway, it would be 10 to the power of 9.5. But a bit more than that, I'm going to go with 10 to the power of 9.6. Which gives us a pretty impressive amount. So that gives us 4 billion. in 2011 and I'll say that's rounded to two significant figures. Last one, it looks a bit different here. Now on this we've got 